Hi, Cizrin here with another episode of Path of Exile University, and today we're going to be looking at crafting. Obviously a uh, very, very in-depth topic in Path of Exile. And uh, should be pretty doable for anyone. We'll try to like, explain the super basics of crafting and uh, get more advanced as we go. Now, crafting is a range from guaranteed outcomes to under randomness. Path of Exile has both. And uh, the crafting bench, which you can find in your hideout once you unlock it from Helena, is uh, you basically get to guarantee one stat, but it is generally the weakest option. But that does not make it useless, and still several times it is more than enough to get what you want. And an important like quick tip that is, well, actually very easy to miss even for veteran players, is that you can craft with your crafting bench on a white item that has nothing on it. Um, so that's important. Learn that your crafting bench crafts, like, you're going to be using these a lot. They're very important, and some unlock super early. And uh, even a lot of very powerful ones unlocks at, like, level 8 and level 12. And, um, yeah, you ideally want something crafted on everything that you can. So, this lesson is going to be about exploring the crafting options and outlining the ones you want to use on a regular basis. And, um... Some of these can be traded, some of these can be pseudo-traded as well, like Harvest, where you can't like trade them directly in the trade window. But we're not going to list everything, because we're only doing an hour, right? Crafting, covering everything would be 5 to 10 hours. For currencies, we're not going to cover currencies and what they do. Uh, they're explained in the in-game in the help panel, and we do have separate videos for those as well. So if you don't know what currencies do, like alteration, transmutes, and things like that, that part will not be covered here. Um, they do they do what they say. So let's go to the basics. We have affixes in Path of Exile. It's very common to have other games do it. And you want to go to the UI and um, go to advanced mod description. This is very important and should always be on. So prefix, it just means it's before so for example if it says tyrannical siege axe then the tyrannical would be the prefix and then um suffix if it says tyrannical siege axe of celebration then the celebration would be the suffix so th those are the affixes and a blue item can have two one prefix one suffix and a rare item can have three prefixes three suffixes there are also implicits, so if you've ever seen like a ruby ring or a leather belt that would have 30 fire resist or 40 life or up to, those would be the implicits. They can be changed for the blessed orb, for example. Um, and then we are getting a new stat that isn't fully fleshed out yet, but it's basically similar to superior from, uh, from Diablo, and it, it should only be on armor, like things you wear, not weapons. Um... In a craft specific explicit modifier, it only affects explicits, and that means they don't impl affect implicits and vice versa. Like, yeah, it'll uh, it'll generally tell you. Enchants, they can only be overwritten by another, but now they can be removed by the crafting bench. It's important to point out because a lot of people don't know that you can remove enchants now. Um, don't get scared that you lose your enchant if you do a craft that affects only explicit or implicit uh, effect modifiers. Like, for example, some people are really worried that, oh, if I scour this rare helmet, will I lose the enchant? No. You would have to literally open the crafting bench and click remove enchant or enchant over it. So, again, two affixes, one prefix and one suffix. And then, yeah. It's a great example of a leather belt. We see the life, 79 life, the viral is the prefix, the lightning is the suffix. And then we have the... Um, Implicit. And then for various six affixes, and it's important to know that you cannot have, like, you can't have three rolls of life, right? For, like, 210 life or whatever. You uh, can, however, on some items have hybrid mods, which are harder to see. But uh, PWDB, for example, which is a really, really good website that will show you all the rolls and stuff, will, like, let you see what all the different rolls are. And uh, here's an example that this, this item has six lines, but it does not have six stats on it, so you could craft on this. So this has uh, socketed minion gems. It's got hypothermia and increased effect of cold ailments. So this stat is one. And then it has strength, armor, and max life. 
So that means that it has one open suffix. Yes, it has one open suffix. So you could craft resist on this. And holding alt down will give you more info like this. So here we can see that it's got tier 7 life, tier 4 armor, tier 2 minion gems, tier 3 hypothermia, and tier 2 strength. So one open suffix. So, metamods are coming, um, there are coming some changes to metamods, and these are basically things like prefixes cannot be changed, suffixes cannot be changed, and they're very scary for new players because they cost exalts for the most part, and they're very advanced. This is likely changing how you get them, maybe either in 3.16 or 3.17. But Chris Wilson on uh, Community Podcast said that they do want to like change Prophecy or even remove it from the game eventually. So what does it mean when a content creator maybe says respect metamods? And, uh, and respecting crafts and stuff basically is like... So a quick example of what the metamods are. It'll be prefixes cannot be changed, suffixes cannot be changed, cannot roll attack mods, and cannot roll caster mods. So, metamods will either prevent modifiers from rolling or allow for extra crafting to be applied. So, for example, multi-mod. Metamods are normal affixes and thus require an empty affix. Like, you can't do this on an item that is full. So, if it has three prefixes and three suffixes, you cannot do this. Now, respecting metamods means the crafting method does not bypass the metamod and allows you to control the possible outcome. And not all crafting methods respect metamods. So... As a quick example, like for example, if I did prefixes, can it be changed on an item and then through an essence, it won't keep the prefixes. It'll, the essence, for example, specifically will override everything. Suffix modifiers for prefixes cannot be changed or sorry, prefixes cannot be changed is that suffix modifiers. It is a suffix modifier, but it allows you to reforce the item once while preventing prefixes from being changed. However, however, if there is an empty prefix slot, it is not protected. Essence just won't be used. Oh, it used to just override it completely. Maybe it'll give you an error message now. I know they've added error messages. It used to be before that it would just like you chaos it. Maybe they have error messages on that too now. So if you have say you have two prefixes, right? So on a uh, on a CJX, you will have a flaring, which is the highest flat physical, and you would have merciless, which is the highest percentage physical. And then if you do prefixes cannot be changed, and used for example a chaos orb or a harvest craft, that would reforge the suffixes, and they could be full. However, this could also fill up the prefix because even though it says it cannot be changed, and what that might seem like, and I remember I thought it worked like this. You might think like, okay, well, it'll never add a prefix because it says prefixes cannot be changed. Well, it, it should maybe be where it is existing prefixes cannot be changed because with prefixes cannot be changed on, you can still add one and end up filling up your item, which maybe you don't want. This can also be a good thing because in the scenario we mentioned, if you have um, the, the really high physical rolls, you can also do reforge physical then. And you have a bigger chance that it'll add a hybrid physical mod. Items with one prefix, two suffixes, and prefix cannot be changed can still add. And uh, like it's just very important to remember that because it's it's not necessarily intuitive because it's not worded as existing prefixes. Suffixes cannot be changed is the same, and remember that they are the opposite, right? So a prefix that cannot be changed is a suffix. A suffix cannot be changed is a prefix. Then we have other mods as well that are advanced. Cannot roll attack and caster modifier. And this prevents that type of modifier from appearing on an item. And um, it'll work on like things like exalted orbs and harvest. But sometimes this is... I would say this is one of the least reliable things. Where sometimes on new mechanics it won't always work. And it won't always work as intended. Normally, crowdsourced information is the way to go for that when, whenever there is a new mechanic. And people will very quickly experiment on that and share on Reddit like, Hey, this does work. This doesn't work. Um, so it, they, they, uh, those can be sometimes complicated with new mechanics. 
So it does not predict currently applied affixes, and you can reforge everything accidentally if you don't pay attention. Like, sometimes you'll see crafters do things too fast, and they'll end up like wiping items clean. Yeah, for example, Harvest Reforge, a Norris cannot roll attack and caster mods, which is a little frustrating because it respects the prefix and suffixes cannot be changed. So it's a, it's a little inconsistent, but that's classic Path of Exile. Like Gazi and his current helmet, yeah, poor Gazi. Then we have, can have three crafted modifiers, they're also called multi-mod. This allows for three crafted modifiers on an item and will require three empty affixes. So a really, really good example again would be, for example, a axe with the merciless, flaring, but also celebration. That would already be a really, really good thing to multi-mod. Um, and uh, gotta remember that the multi-mod or meta-mod uh, that says can have th or can have three crafted modifiers is counted as a craft itself. So you can't have that and three additional crafts. It does count itself. However, you can annul or remove the meta mod if you're feeling lucky. So a use case for that would be multi-modding something and then using the annul and then exalting it afterwards. We do see people doing that. Very, you have to be very lucky though. You could obviously ruin the item with this. Browsing through other crafts on the crafting bench or referring to PUEDB is very, very important before crafting. And there's another website, Craft of Exile. I'll actually bring it up because it's such a valuable tool for learning crafting. Um, I can't think of many errors or things that aren't correct in this. Like it's very, it's kept very up to date, but it is honestly just incredibly good. And you can also simulate an item that you have. Like, you can simulate an item that you have and then start from there. And you can just play around with Exalted Orbs and Annulments, and it'll use, for the for the most part, generally the same odds that are in the game. So, very, very interesting to play around with, and especially, like, more expensive currencies. So, well worth using. So... Here's an example of prefixes cannot be changed. So only modifiers that already exist on the item are counted. So if we use Harvest Reforge rare item with a fire modifier, that would keep the energy shield and the evasion. But it'll reforge the dex and the attribute mod. And it'll guarantee at least one fire res on the item. Or sorry, one fire. So this could give us fire res, for example. Um... And I don't think there is any other fire months because it's not influenced, so it would guarantee fire rest, basically. Essences does not respect meta mods. And like I said, I thought that they would just overwrite it because we've had people doing like prefixes cannot be changed and it's just wiping the item clean, but apparently they've added an error message now. And there are a few... There's only one other thing I've gotten an error on, and that's trying to double veil an item, basically. Like unveiling an item and then trying to use a veiled chaos orb will give an error message as well. So they have started adding error messages, but before they would just overwrite the item. Um, essences are still very good for crafting. Obviously, it does guarantee stuff, um, but uh, you cannot do like prefixes cannot be changed and then guarantee attack speed on a weapon. Some things that are really, really good and worth mentioning for essences is that it allows you stats that are sometimes unavailable. For example, spell damage on an axe or dexterity and intelligence on belts. And there are also the uh, um, the uh, the four special mods, which is hysteria, uh, insanity, delirium, and horror, which you get by corrupting a dread, scorn, misery, or envy, basically the purple essences. And they will also give you unique modifiers that you cannot get in any other way. Except for there's a Delve Fossil. Glyphic. Glyphic Fossil can give you the uh, Rare Essence mods. So, Beasts. These do respect meta mods. And um, generally you don't... Um, their meta mods are generally not needed as they craft are specific enough or very limited in scope. Like, for example, adding suffixes to flasks. Uh, creating uniques, creating currency, but there are some good ones where it's basically an annulment and an exalt. So either suffix to prefix or prefix to suffix. 
And they can also be really, really good to combine with metamons. Um, and there is also divines from beasts. It's definitely worth using. Some other notable beasts is imprint a magic item, which is basically a save file of a magic item that you can return back to. But it cannot be corrupted. Like, you cannot corrupt it and then save it. Uh, it cannot be used on a different item as well. It has to be the exact same item you made it from. So you can't, like, imprint a Valax or a Siege Axe and then be like, okay, this one's good. I'll imprint it. I'll imprint the load back on another one. It has to be the exact same item ID. Split item. Uh, it splits an item into two and it'll throw some affixes on uh, each. So generally, if it's six, it'll put three on one, three on the other. And uh, it does not split implicits or sockets. So this is really, really good for duplicating six links, especially in Soul Cell Phone. A split item cannot be split again, but otherwise acts like a normal item. And this is super important to note because there is a large, large amount of the player base that think if an item says split, it is the same as mirrored. The reason for that is that Grinding Gear themselves used mirrored items as an example of explaining what splits do. But split items are not similar to mirrored items. You can craft and do anything and you can have, you can in fact mirror a split item as well so even though gdd for some reason chose to use mirrored as an explanation of something similar to split you can um like you can do anything to a split item and yes you cannot split influence synthesis fractured or enchanted items that is true and yes you can influence a split item you can do anything to a split item you can use a Conquer Exalted Orb on it and anything. So split items are very good and it's a great way for those that do know how strong they are to get cheaper deals just because so many people will avoid buying them. Yeah, you cannot split them again. But you can mirror them. Add a modifier to an influence item. This is a normal augment. So for example, that would be a Conquer Exalted Orb. Or sorry, <clears throat> Um, it'll work if you have used a Conquer Exalted Orb on it. So, for example, to like explain some differences here. We have the Harvest Augments, right? Like, Augment Fire. Augment, well, anything, actually, from Harvest. Even the regular Augment doesn't work um, from Harvest. They're limited to not work on influence items. However, the Bestiary ones do, but they're just the same as an Exalted Orb anyway. Or a Leo Exalted Orb. Um, it's a little bit weird because it makes them a lot less special than they could be. Uh, it is, it is literally just an Exalted Orb for an Influence item. It is an Exalted Orb that works on Influence items, which Exalted Orbs do anyway. Yeah, so it's a worse Exalted Orb. I've never used one. It's kind of just meh. Then we have Add Suffix, Remove a Random Prefix, and Add Prefix, Remove a Random Suffix is very, very strong. Sometimes you will have, um... Just you really need to move a suffix to a prefix. So maybe you can wipe the suffixes, etc. Very, very strong. Betrayal. One of the most complicated mechanics. And Betrayal we do have a separate video for. Which we got a lot of praise for making Betrayal easy to understand. Extremely complicated. But there are some very strong Betrayal crafts. Ashlane and Research Tier 4. Uh, respects metamods. And... Um, is still a very, very strong. Obviously, it got nerfed. Ashlyn just used to add a Veiled modifier, but now it will remove a random mod and then add a Veiled modifier. Then we have Orishi in Research, which uh, will give White Sockets. Telic in Transportation, which will give Quality. And um, if it's in Transport, it's Weapon. If it's in Fortification, it's Armor. And in Research, it's Flask. And the transport and fortification ones is really good to do before six syncing an item because the higher the quality is, the easier and less fusings you will use. Guff in any house has um, speed crafting. The, the tier four one is pretty nice because it's one minute, but the only guff I really enjoy and care about doing is transport. I really like it for crafting cluster jewels and then chaos bombing because you get a minute of chaos bomb. And if you have like pretty good reaction time, you can get some pretty juicy jewels. Jorgen and Research is incredibly strong. Um, this is sort of the only place in Path of Exile where talismans really shine. And I very often get asked how I did it when I'm using one. But it's sometimes you'll have a really strong white amulet, right? Let's say we have an amulet with 79 life, 35 crit chance, 35 crit multi, uh, a resist, 
and uh, maybe percentage energy shield, right? Just a really solid amulet. I would anoint it, and then Jorgen can turn that into a talisman. And then he can do it into a tier 1, a tier 2, or a 3 talisman. Depending on um, what level he's at. So very, very strong. And then, yeah, the different tiers have different pools. So look up talismans, what they do, and which one you want. Like Generally, I will go for tier 2. And uh, that is strictly on white items. And you can anoint them afterwards too, but then you need a special oil from Corrupted Blighted Maps. Then we have Leo in Research at 3 and 4, which is 1 or 2 Exalted Orbs to an item. Torah in Research is Gem XP, which is just insanely good. Harvest. Wouldn't be... Actually, I don't think they're changing it for 3.16 because I'm sure they would have said something by now. But um, Harvest is... The only change that we know they're doing is that all Reforges are going to work on normal magic and rare items. So you don't have to worry about like... It's not just Alchemy or Chaos anymore. Just super good. Harvest respects Metamons. They're insanely strong. They does not respect... Uh, cannot roll caster or attack mods for some reason. But it respects the prefixes and suffixes. Don't know if it's intended with the caster and attack mods. So that could be changed randomly at some point. Specific tag reforges guarantee one more modifier of that group. And especially strong for influence items. And it's very important to remember that Harvest still works on influence items. And then we have the Augment X on non-influenced item is rarely used outside of weapons so for example augment physical very very strong on weapons and then we have remove non-x add x um and that is basically an annul remove they do still exist but they are so incredibly rare uh there is like a discord tier called the forbidden trove tft and people will generally trade them there and there's the less chance of getting scammed but obviously still a big chance um, because you have to, like, take their item, craft it for them. Generally, you get scammed out of really good items, is what would happen. So, if all the modifiers in the group are either suffix or prefix, then it's generally safe to use on an item. Um, it's a, a good example of, of when the remove non-X add X is really strong. Is for example, say you have a hubris circlet, and you have flat energy shield and hybrid energy shield, but you don't have percentage energy shield. Instead, you have mana. And if you then do remove defense and add defense, then uh, that will guarantee that you get an energy shield roll. So it's it's very strong for things like that. Um, speed and crit, commonly used on weapons. Do you mean remove non-defense? Yeah, didn't I say that? But yeah, remove non-defense. Very, very strong. It'll basically remove the mana. And obviously mana isn't tagged, so we never had a way to remove it. Um, obviously all of this is very complicated. Life is generally used um, on Hunter and Elder belts if prefix is a space for a life mod. So for example, you could do um, prefixes cannot be changed and reforge life. Obviously we cannot do things like remove non-life because they don't work on influence item. So you have to do like there and now is when we need to use metamons and uh yeah so in, we have reforge x and these are the ones that we use the most with metamons so that's like reforge life and um uh, stuff like that caster really really strong on um curses on influence rings so if you're trying to get an assassin's mark ring elemental hit ring etc reforge caster incredibly strong um, and it's, it actually makes it reasonable to get like rings with like 60 life plus and a curse. Uh, attack for weapon elemental damage on belts, physical or elemental for plus one skill gems on weapons. And this means that if you grab a item level two, one from the vendor and you use reforge fire on it, you'll very quickly get plus one fire gems. Uh, defense for energy shield gear and block effects on armor. And for example, a shield for spectral shield throw, if that doesn't get nerfed in 3.16. And then we also have reforge an item keeping all prefixes or suffixes. This is one of the strongest things in the game right now for crafting. Because sometimes you might have perfect prefixes on an item and you don't want to risk annulling it. And then you can use this. It's incredibly strong and you can use it on influence items. And it can be combined with metamods as well. But they provide no bonus as the metamods do the same as the craft itself. So don't waste your two exalts. But very, very strong. Incredibly strong. 
it's what makes harvest harvest really jewel socket crafts as well is things like uh reroll links 10 times if a free stack of 10 fusing i really don't like these um Honestly, I think this is one of the ones that really should be changed because I, I very rarely care about just getting 10 fusings. I think it should be a random number. So it should be, it should give you anywhere from 10 to like X number of fusings with the, the higher you go, the rarer it is. But it would be really cool to find like, oh dude, I just found 300 fusings in Harvest. That would be really exciting. Whereas 10, I've never been excited for and I've never hit above a five link. It's just incredibly rare. The socket color crafts are incredibly strong to get off colors. Uh, for example, if you have a strength chest and you need six blue, very, very strong. Um, and, and also the strongest thing about harvest is the reforge more likely and that adheres and respects crafted things. So sometimes you'll find an item. Um, I, I, I generally will use reforge more likely on influence spaces. And a uh, quick example is, for example, a influence titanium spirit shield. So very often what people want is, for example, um, energy shield on block and then also maybe intelligence or you maybe want a uh, spell block. Now, spell block in particular can be crafted by the crafting bench. So if you manage to you manage to get the reforge uh, or sorry, you manage to get the energy shield on block, then you craft spell block and use reforge more likely. Now there is a chance that it will naturally roll that spell block onto the item. And it's really, really good for that. It's also good for so many things that you can... Um... Actually, yeah, let's do a quick example on, on Craft of Exile. It's a quick example. Create a new item. Offhand. Shield. Titanium Spirit Shield, it's Shaper. And then we are going to have, let's see, this should be here now. We are going to have the Recover, where's the Energy Shield? There. We're going to have the ES on block. And then, try to just force the yellow. No. Okay, that doesn't matter. And, and then we are going to Benchcraft, block spell damage. So it would look like this. Now, the really, really good thing here, and it might not like instantly show in the example, but Reforge more likely, this has a chance. Actually, it did exactly what I uh, what I wanted to show. So now it um, kept the energy shield on block and it gave us tier two spell block. And now, now that we've got that, I can do, uh, for example, and I've, I've done this quite a lot. This is very expensive, but it like just lets you show a little bit what you can do. And now I would do suffixes cannot be changed. And I would reroll plus defenses. And I would do that until I hit uh, tier one flat or tier one energy shield and then craft the other. Um, let's see. So a quick example of what I would stop on. Um, that, that is a great hit. This is a great hit that we would keep. So we've used six exalts. And this is a great source or thing to use and uh to use exalt on an ssf and then we would um like recraft that until it's 100 percent and then it's 69 es we would have like 330 es with spell block and recover energy shield on block so incredibly strong the reforge more likely probably the strongest thing in crafting and most underrated so resistance swaps very very strong um, they'll let you do fire resist to lightning resist and, um, you can like swap those around. You can like play Tetris with them and it can also be used on temple modifiers. So for example, the, uh, cold resist and damage with hits against the, or sorry, yeah, increased damage with hits against enemies. You can switch that into the lightning one, for example, or the fire one. And you can also use it on the leech on amulets. So if you have a lightning resist amulet. With uh, Leech, you can switch that into a Fire Resist Amulet with Leech. There are Flask Crafts as well. There are some really, really advanced Flask Crafts with um, just Flasks have extra charges, extra charge recovery, all of those things. They are mostly used. Honestly, the only time I ever see them used is the Gauntlet Races. 
That's the only time I see the Muse. Because that's when you really want it for like the Feared in the Gauntlet and stuff like that. It'll be like plus 100 charges. Um, and there are item enchants that change the quality effects. So for example, on a test that instead of quality giving energy shield or armor or evasion, it'll let quality give you stats or resists or mana. And these can be removed. Um, yeah, until 3.15, they would just ruin your item. So. Fossils. These do not respect metabonds. And um, they more or less modify an item. Of, they're kind of similar to essences, but it's more like you're building a more specific essence. Um, and yeah, they have more and less of modifiers of a certain type and can block whole mold groups. So for example, a pristine fossil will not let any like defense things go on. So no energy shield. So it's especially strong the more sockets you have in your resonators and can also be a really, really cheap way of spamming one mod group. I really wish they would change so that one fossil could be used without a resonator uh, and that you only needed two and three and four mod resonators, that there was no reason to have one, one mod. Um, and then there are some really, really insane things here. We can show quickly in Craft of Excel as well. So we have some examples, but convoking one for minions makes this insanely strong. So we can click here on one-handed weapons, convoking one, and then say we want to do minion and spell skill gems. We click on fossils, four resonators, and just compute. And it'll now calculate what is the best way to make this uh, one. And it's surprisingly cost efficient. Because trying to get this with chaos is literally never going to happen. But with fossils, it is incredibly cheap. Takes a while. This is one of the ones that have like the most combinations. And for this, for example, is somewhere you would never ever use three resonators to do this because it would be so incredibly rare. Here you you want to use four, and it's so cost efficient to use four. Um, you can see here that it's like eight times or six times more expensive to use three. So with four, it's in one in twelve on average. 1 in 12 on average. So 4 is like perfect. Um, and then yeah, it can be uh, used for like high life gear as well while blocking things like um, defensive mods. So pristine's really really good for belts. And yeah, refer to Craft of Exile. It's so good to play around with. Next up we have the Awakener Orb and the Maven Orb. And the Awakener Orb reforges an influence item from two influence items. It does not respect meta mods, And you can target both influence modifiers to keep prefixes or suffixes, allowing you to craft the other side freely. So for example, what I mean by that is you can have... You can... Uh, like a chest is a good example, right? You could do uh, Hunter physical damage taken as Chaos. And you could do plus one gem level from Shaper. And uh, and then you could, whatever the suffix is hit doesn't really matter because you could do uh, the harvest uh, reforge suffixes and then and wipe that and, and craft that. So with Awaken Orbs, it, it is a lot of RNG, especially if you have an item where you want a suffix and a prefix because you might not have a way of saving the item. Maybe it like fills up. Maybe, um, maybe you want an amulet with uh, life on it. That could be really hard. So Awaken Orbs are a bit of a gamble and you really want to be lucky. Maven Orb, this does respect meta mods, so you can pr protect influence modifiers on one side of the item, but it will fail if there are no two influence modifiers which can be changed. And there are, we have a few like, um, there, there are multiple crafting guides on how to guarantee certain mod combos while using Awaken Orb and Maven Orb. So uh, yeah, you can search for that on YouTube and stuff. And they are expensive. Generally crafting with like, advanced crafting with Awakener or Maven or if you're looking at multiple eggs. All right, let's see. Um, so let's do some examples of a crafting recipe. There's one method. One sec. There. Um, one method for a plus one or a plus two bow for toxic rain is using a shrieking essence of dread. So this would be a plus three bow. Shrieking essence of dread on an item level 50 short bow 
from the porcupine card. And normally, uh, item level 50 is too low to get plus two. But it uh, once you hit it, you will need an empty prefix and an empty suffix modifier. And you spam these essences until you get... Um, you can spam these essences until you get plus one socket of gems at the same as plus two. But uh, you can um, you can also force it on for one extra exalt with uh, cannot roll attack mods. Then you either use an exalt or a Leo slam or a cheap non-influenced harvest slam in a trade league. And um, once you have that, like you have one open suffix, one open prefix, but you've crafted the um, cannot roll attack mods. The only thing you can hit is plus one socket of gems. Then we do prefixes cannot be changed and scour or you could also if if you are yeah actually you would always have an open suffix in this case so yeah you do prefixes cannot be changed for two exalts and scour now you can multi mod you can get attack speed and dot multi or you can get um uh plus two support if you have an empty prefix so that would be really good for empower so here we're going to show one method so here we see we have like we've used four dreads then cannot roll attack modifiers plus one level of socketed gems um with the exalted orb and then we uh do we remove the cannot roll attack modifiers we do prefaces cannot be changed we scour and then we have a plus three bow gems and we use a grove bow because it's got a lower dex requirement and um it also has very high attack speed so it's good for toxic green and then we finish it up by multimodding the attack speed and chaos damage over time multiplier. And then a second method for a plus three bow is you get an item level 78 bow, six sync bow with a 1.5 attack speed. So thicket, short bow, grove bow. We alteration spam until plus two and any random suffix. And then you regal and then you hope it gets a suffix specifically. We do best theory prefix to suffix craft if you regal the prefix and pray you don't have to go again because, you know, if you remove the plus two you have to start again uh and once you have one prefix and two suffixes you do cannot roll attack mods and you slam with um anything exalt leo or harvest for plus one gems then you do a hunter exalt slam for some tier of chaos dot multi and then you do um prefixes cannot be changed and scour now you have an even stronger bow now you have an even stronger bow this was done a lot in the gauntlet for example and you can see, this is a very, very good bow. Obviously, pretty expensive. Do we have any questions pertaining to crafting? And then we're being joined by Steel Mage in like 30 minutes. Any crafting questions? Any crafting questions? Where's the best play to, place to find recipes? Um, so if we go in-game, it'll actually tell you. It'll actually tell you where um, recipes are. What does metamod mean? That's what we explained at the start. Metamod is the prophecy ones. Like prefixes cannot be changed and stuff. And for finding for finding crafts, it'll tell you. So for example here, abyssal chamber in the Azurite mine. Um, and you can just hover over them. It'll show which ones are veiled. Craft of Exile is the best place to learn about crafting. Playing around with it. Best way to get life unlock on a shield? Uh, reforged life or pristine fossils. And also you're experimenting with reforged more likely. Best way to craft plus two chaos amulets? I don't think there is a way for that anymore. I think plus two chaos amulet is almost unobtainable now that we can't, um, can't awaken or a bit and you can't force it anymore. Does the plus one gem level vendor recipe work on one-handed staves? Yes. Can you make an example of wands or chests? Example of what? How do you figure out the best crafting method for an item? Asking people and experience. But like crafting what? You can't just say generically crafting something. You have to like, you always have a target. You always have something specific that you're crafting. What would be the appropriate time for a new player to really start looking into crafting and trying to learn how it exactly works? Um, 
playing around with it and, and starting to learn like generally you learn one thing at a time like you you do want to like learn it very quickly a lot of people do end up buying their items but like learning how to craft things can save you a lot of money i can like show you really quickly how to like craft a very cheap good weapon this is what i do on on ssf quite a lot so for a wand right and i'll show the power of essences this we have an item level why aren't you why aren't you lower level? Five, five, any twos? Eleven, one, five. Okay, it'll be slightly more unlikely at a level five, but ideally you want an item level two one. Slightly more unlikely, but this is a very, very good source of getting strong. Oh, add started. I'm sorry. We went a bit over. This is a really, really good example of getting strong weapons. So here, I mean, obviously just the essence alone is pretty strong, but what you're going to be looking for, and honestly in SSF I use, it's also a lot more likely on item level two. Um, this would already be a pretty good, um, for like armor brand for example but what we're looking for is plus one gem level which on an item level two one is quite likely you would probably yeah here here is a good one and this would be even stronger if you didn't have that lightning and on item level two it's actually very likely and then you could try to annul that off but even if you um if you have that with an open prefix you have an insanely strong one you're just missing out on like 30 spell damage it's a really good way to like craft easy cheap ones but either way, we are going to wrap it up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Path of Exile um, University. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Sub if you like the video. And try to die less than I do. <laughs>